Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at collaboration, collaboration working with documents, collaboration working in the new document library, and real life examples of what happens when a number of people want to collaborate in a SharePoint document library, the new SharePoint document library in 2016, and how some of those granular functions that we saw in the previous video work together to provide different types of functional environments and escalated functions to allow you to make various functional changes, operational changes inside your document library. So in this example I've got two users there's this user, which is Jeff, and there is a second user called Jane, which I'll show you in a moment. And we're going to look at, as we manipulate the different out-of-the-box functionalities for document versioning and document library versioning, how that changes the interaction between these users. So let's go into the SharePoint list, into the settings, into version settings and what we're going to do is we're going to set this back so we're going to say that we don't need any content to be approved, we're going to remove all versioning notice that disappears here, make sure that any user can read these items and required documents to be checked out equal to no. So we're now at the very basic settings Effectively, we've removed all version control from these documents. So, let's go and see uh, what Jane sees, and then edit some documents and see what's ha see what happens. Okay, so in this view, we're here. We're in Jane's view, and if you remember. We added a few documents last time. Let's take this one, May 2016. Let's let's open that document up. And let's open that up online. Let's just type into that. Now, notice here it says saving. If we now drop back, here's May 2016. Notice the version number is still on one. Now, now that has happened because there is no versioning. So therefore, any changes you make to this document, there won't be any history, there'll be no rollback facilities. Any changes you make will be made straight to the document itself. And it, within SharePoint, there'll be no history management or doc or version control management to support any of that. So let's go back in and um, make another change here very simply. And if we just add another line here. Now, if I drop back in to Jeff's view, and in Jeff's view, we open up this document. What we're going to get here when we go to edit this document is we will get the latest updated changes that Jane has made. So notice we had the first change because we saved that. Now this is the second change and it also tells us here that look Jane is actually editing this document and she, this is where her cursor is. So if I come in underneath and say and I just check, I add that text in there now if we go back to Jane's view, 
what we see here in Jane's view is, look, we've, we've just added that in and that comes up and, and it shows us where Jeff's cursor is and obviously Jane's cursor was here. So what you get out of the box with Office 365, the Office 365 suite and SharePoint is you get this very rich online Word document editing facility where two people can work on the same document at the same time adding in different uh, comments um, you, you can collaborate and talk obviously we've got this new chat window here there's, there's quite a lot that you can do so you can work collaboratively together on the same document and in, in my opinion this is extremely powerful um, it was something that Google had done some years before but this is far more effective because this will save the document straight into uh, SharePoint and, and then allow you to leverage all that SharePoint functionality as, as well as all the word features and certainly the word features are far richer than anything that Google has developed to date um, so you could take this offline into your into your desktop um, and this is being updated and changed all the time so I you know in my opinion this is absolutely super you know this is king of the tree um, and one of the most powerful collaborative tools that you can you could really have as an example you could have a meeting where you're taking minutes or you're agreeing, uh, agreeing meeting uh, agendas and uh, agreeing meeting outcomes and, and discussions in meetings and you could be just recording it all here together collaboratively three or four of you being able to add that data in so that you get a verbose record of, of what was actually said um, as an example or you could be working or you know with somebody 2,000 miles away um, on a particular document and you're going to get immediate feedback and you can see immediate comments um, so it's such a powerful collaborative tool so let's go back now to SharePoint now obviously uh, no matter what happens here you're only going to get version 1 so if you noticed we're in Jane's view here and I made the last change so it will say that I made the last change and we're on version 1 and if I go back into Jeff's view obviously it will say I made the change we're on version 1 and it was modified two minutes ago and if we go back to Jane's view and in Jane's view we, we reopen this document back up And we just make one final change. What we're going to see here is that that information updates. The last person who modified it was Jane Johnson, and we're still on version one. And if I go back to Jeff's view, and in Jeff's view I just refresh, we will get that change come through now and show us that that, that is what has, has happened. So you get that very rich interface, but you don't get any of the version control. So any changes that are made are immediately saved, and there's no version control here in SharePoint. So the next step from this is let's go back in to manage views into version settings and let's switch to uh, create major versions okay and we're just going to say okay So what we're going to do now, we're going to drop back into Jane's view. And here in Jane's view, notice we're still on version 1 for this document. We're going to open that document back up. Let's edit that document. Now we're going to drop back. And 
what we see here is the version moves up to 2 because we've now switched on the ability for versions to begin to take place as we make changes and as I exited the document it saved it and added that version so now if I go back to, to Jeff's view you notice we see that second version here in Jeff's view we're going to now edit that document again and then we're going to drop back what we're going to see here is that I made the change and we're on version 3 now if we drop back into Jane's view and what we see here in Jane's view again is version 3 that I've made that change now if we click here and say let's have a look at that version history for this document what we're going to see here is look here's all the versions that have ch have taken place so there was my change and there's Jane's last two changes and you know we have this option to go okay look I want to restore this so if we click restore it's going to say we're about to replace the current version so if I say OK what we're going to do is we're going to create another version so what it did here is it we were on version 3 but we restored version 2 so instead of deleting version 3 and making version 2 version 3 if you like what happened is we took version 2 and we made a new version so we can still go back to version 3 if we want now this is the most now this is the most up to date version so when we come away from this what we're going to see if we click on this document is we'll see here where Jane edited the major version but where I then edited the major version it doesn't show on here because that was in version 3 not in version 2 and we have restored version 2 so if we know, now go back um, back to the document library and we go back to the version history and we say do you know what look we're going to restore now version 3 let's restore that you're always going to get this alert that says do you sure you want to do that so we now get version 5 from version 3 which replaces it and obviously here it tells you who has made the the version change because we're now in as Jane now if we now go back and have a look at this document what we will see here is the fact that there is my comment so this is once you've got version control on you can start making these changes and if you want to roll back versions you can do so if I come in here and I edit this document and I type in here Jane edit And I leave this open and now we drop back into Jeff's view. So here in Jeff's view, I'm going to open that document up. I'm going to edit that document. We still get this very rich interface that tells us that Jane's in here and, and she's making changes this where her cursor is. So we still get the same functionality where we can still edit together in real time. And yet, if we now drop back and save this document, we will still get that rich version control. We're now on version 7 here in, in Jeff's view. And if we drop back and look at what Jane sees, and then we are version 7 so the document has been saved and we've now got seven versions if we look at that history with the last change being saved
uh, by Jeff who made the last editable change to that document. So hopefully this begins to start to explain some of the rich tapestry around the functionality for version control in SharePoint 2016 and how it's layered on top of each other. So, so far we've got the very basic out of the box editing of Word Online and obviously you need the latest Office 365 suite, probably 2016 to do this effectively for both parties and you've got that very rich ability to be able to edit the document at the same time and all the functionality that comes with Word and then you layer that on top with this version control so we can start rolling back those changes if we want to um, if, if we see things that aren't, aren't quite right. 